a quote from Ellen White that caught my attention about a characteristic of Jesus. Well, what is that? So in the book, The Desire of Ages, she writes that some people regarded Christ's mission as an innovation and questioned his right to interfere with what was permitted by the authorities of the temple. They were offended because the traffic had been interrupted and they stifled the convictions of the Holy Spirit. Well, Jesus took a whole new approach as he taught the good news of the gospel. He had a way of simplifying the ideas and concepts of scripture, using language and stories that anyone could understand. Yes, he is the great innovator, isn't he? You know, one of OCI's core values is to lead with innovation. As we consider the idea of innovation, what do we find? You know, we often think of innovation in terms of new business and enterprise ideas that are focused on solving a problem in a new way to produce like a financial return. Right, but what would it look like in the context of the Great Commission and taking the three angels' messages to every nation, tribe, language, and people? I see your point. We live at a time in Earth's history when new inventions and ideas surround us daily. The, in fact, the word innovation is so overused that we may even wonder what it means. The world seems to be constantly looking for the next largest or most unusual thing to create a buzz on social media. As a result, our communication channels are filled with people who use the new and strange to get a following, even if it requires a conspiracy theory of some sort. I agree. And what about artificial intelligence? AI is fast taking root in almost every context. This technology can listen to your voice, watch your face and lips move on a video recording, and then translate your voice and facial expressions into many languages with the push of a button. It's an amazing technology with incredible possibilities and significant risk. So how should we properly use innovation as Christians, as ministry leaders, or even as missionaries? Hmm. I think the best path forward is to make it increasingly simple for people to access and understand the gospel. We are told that the work will be finished by simple means. Amen. It reminds me of another quote from Ellen White, where she points out that there will be those among us who will always want to control the work of God to dictate even what movements shall be made when the work goes forward under the direction of the angel who joins the third angel in the message to be given to the world. God will use ways and means by which it will be seen that he is taking the reins. In his own hands, the workers will be surprised by the simple means that he will use to bring about and perfect his work of righteousness. Can we imagine a world where we as the followers of the greatest innovator the world has ever known will take the gospel to the entire world in a short time? I am excited to see more ministries and missionaries involved in God's mission. Here at OCI, we lead with innovation, and we are eager to know your ideas and innovate together. How do we balance ministry and business? You know, I read this quote, astonishing quote. It said, many people think, Business is business and religion is religion. But I tell you that these two cannot be separated. They are one. Actually, she even goes further to say this is a marriage, uh, a married couple. You are not to put asunder that which God has joined. Business and religion. So how in the world do we bring these two worlds together? The truth is this, that most of us 
are either on one side or the other side. This is why we have the service industry, the nurses, the teachers, and so forth. They're, they're not thinking about money. They're not thinking about business. They're thinking about ministry. But then we have the business side, and they're all this, they're, they're all the greedy, we think, you know, greedy, money making, this and that. But the truth is, we judge each other, and this is not helping us because actually, to really advance the work of God, we need to bring these two worlds together to recognize the benefits of both. So how do you know what in the world is a benefit to having business be connected to ministry? Well, here's the key insight. Business actually enables us to do long-term ministry. So the true balance is our focus should be ministry, of course, but if we just help 10 people and we don't make that business-wise sustainable, then we can only help 10 people. But if we make that sustainable and we generate enough to be able then to not just serve 10, but to serve a thousand, well, that is the key. So let's bring the balance, business and ministry together. If you know what God wants you to do, then you cannot fail. However, succeeding in raising a ministry demands knowledge and talent supplemented by godly counsel based on practical experience. Start Right will provide the impetus needed to make an informed start. Therefore, be diligent to present yourself approved to God. A worker who does not need to be ashamed. You cannot but succeed. Download it now. Today's story comes from Laurel Brook Academy in Tennessee, United States. Laurel Brook Academy is a self-supporting boarding school located in the mountains of Dayton. Its environment inspires students and staff to fully engage in a Bible-based educational experience. The ministry aims to enable the students to share and model Christ through academic excellence, vocational training, and missionary endeavors. Students have the opportunity to join mission trips, health evangelism, and service projects. Besides the academic curriculum, they also learn construction, mechanics, agriculture, health care, and certified nurse assistance training to be equipped with skills and solid work ethics to thrive where God calls them. Now, let's watch the testimony of a young student. I come from Honduras and I'm a junior in Lorebrook Academy. Before coming to Lorebrook, I was in a seven day Adventist and my thoughts about God, it were, he's a creator. He just created us and that's it. Maybe I'm gonna pay attention sometimes to him, but I'm not going to pay attention to him all the time. I thought that he didn't love me, he didn't forgive me for everything that I had done in my past. I was doing the right things and I just I wanted I just wanted to live my life. I just wanted to have pleasures and stuff. My first thought to come to Lord it was saying I'm just going to graduate from this school and then live my life. But something changed my life over here. I hear many people about talking about Sunday Adventists and talking about God and about the Bible. At this time, I was a sophomore, and then I heard this senior talking to me, and he was so gentle. He was like, read the Bible or, or do something, and let's go to church. I didn't want to, I didn't want to go. I didn't want to listen to him, but I thought that God was calling me. God was hearing my prayers before, because hearing my, my prayers before was like, I wanted to have a change in my life, and I just thinking that God is it's working. I got to Laurelbrook and things seemed a little different. 
I was hearing the word God like all the day by my friends and by everybody, including by my roommate. But he was a good example for me because he used to help me to understand. He used to like explain me some of the questions that I, I didn't understand. Why God did this or how, for what? What was the reason for this? But that time, there was a senior over here. I was a sophomore and I just looked at him and I just saw him like he used to read his Bible all the time. I used to ask myself, why? Why would you lose like that time? And then I, I asked him many questions to him and he used to answer me. But I wasn't quite sure until he, he helped me to understand some of the things. I used to receive Bible studies with him. I used to like, he used to help me to understand him, read the Bible and more of the stuff. And coming here, having my Bible class, that was the best experience I have. My best class, I think, that helped me to understand more about God. I saw many of the students and many of the staff, some of the staff at that time, they were showing God in his life. My life now is like passing more time with God, trying to have that communion with God. Before, I wasn't paying that much attention to God. I didn't really understand and I didn't really want to have that relationship with God. But now, I've seen like a change in me. I really like it and I really enjoy passing time with God. And one of my favorite Bible verse that helped me to understand that it was for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That was the main Bible verse that is stuck in my, in my brain. It was like, wow, He loved us and He gave everything for us. Before, my plans weren't quite sure what I was going to do. It was like graduating from my old school, going to a university, study uh, engineer or whatever. Now, I'm not sure still, but I think God has a purpose for me, and I'm looking, I'm, I'm trying to find it. Lorebrook changed my life. I think more ministries like this should be all around the world so that more people could be saved. It inspires me to see how young people are being trained for a life of service to live the mission that God gave us. As we just talked, we know we live in a world where there is room for creativity and innovation. There are hundreds of ideas out there on how we can take the gospel to the world in different ways. But friend, it doesn't matter which way you want to do it. What matters is to be active, to do something for God, to be involved in His mission right now. Jesus is coming soon, and we must be ready to let others know. I invite you to pray about this, to surrender to God, and to ask Him how He wants you to serve Him. Outpost Centers International is committed to God's mission, and we want to partner with you. Please get in touch with us so we can help light up the world together.